Yeah, uh, am I audible? Okay, and uh, are you able to see the screen? Yes, uh, you are able to now unmute. Okay. Right. So let's start with the lecture. Yeah. OK, good morning. So have you uh, uh, tried this problem? Anyone got the answer? <coughs> or did anyone find out other way to look at it? Okay, so uh, uh, if you have not done it, okay, so uh, let me give you a different approach to look at it. Okay, so I found a very simple approach than this, okay, which will be very clear that uh, our claim is, <coughs> is uh, to show that correlation coefficient belongs to this interval minus 1. Right? Yeah. X comma Y. And uh, you know that correlation coefficient is defined as 
covariance of x comma y divided by sigma x and sigma y where <coughs> the sigma x and sigma y are the standard deviation for random variable x and random variable y respectively. Now we know okay so you have so we want to prove this so how let uh, I have here I know that variance of x1 plus x2 I know that is going to be a variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus two time covariance of x1 comma x2 right similarly you can also show that similarly variance of x1 minus x2 if you do the their, their difference is going to be variance of x1 plus variance of x2 minus 2 times covariance of x1 comma x2. So only change whenever here minus here is minus whenever here is plus here is plus. <coughs> okay what we know further about the variance property is that variance of I did it. Okay. So what we know is also we know that variance of that x1 is nothing but a square time variance of x1. <coughs> right? Okay. So we know all these properties, and so I'm listing out. Moreover, we also know the covariance properties. Okay, that covariance of a x1 comma uh, x2 is equals to a time covariance of x1 comma x2. So I'm just recalling those properties because I'm going to use them straight forward. Now, look at this. Okay, variance of x divided by sigma x plus minus y divided by sigma y. Okay, I have these two random variables x and y. So I am, I am dividing each entry by sigma x. So it will generate another random variable you can say or you can say in particular it's x by sigma x. And similarly y by sigma y y is defined. Okay, those two are random variables. And just now we have learned that this is going to be variance of x by sigma x. Plus variance of y divided by sigma y and plus minus two times covariance of x by sigma x comma y by sigma y. So for plus it will be plus, for minus it will be minus. Now I am going to use this property here and this property here. Okay. So that's going to be further what I will have is uh, this will implies variance of x by sigma x plus minus y divided by sigma y is equals to so variance of x by sigma x so 1 by sigma x whole square time variance of x because of this first property plus 1 upon sigma y square i'm just writing additional steps over here okay variance of y those who know what is going to happen you can skip those steps and here is going to be plus minus 2 and this 1 by sigma x will common when you apply this one first and then again it will apply it will be applied so you will have 1 upon sigma x into sigma y so so plus minus 2 time uh, so 2 2 is already there covariance of x comma y divided by sigma x sigma Now, if you carefully look at the first variance of x is nothing but sigma x square, right? Okay, so 1 by sigma x square times sigma x square is 1 plus 1 plus minus 2 times this correlation coefficient, right? So this is equals to 2 plus minus 2 times rho x y. Now what? 
now since you know whether you take the difference or whether you take the plus of two or sum of two random variables variance is always to be a non negative greater than equals to zero this will be always greater than equals to zero so what it will give you further is this will imply this will imply 1 plus minus rho x comma y is always greater than equals to 0 right 2 is because 2 is again a positive constant you can divide both sides now if you go with the plus sign so this will implies i'm saying that so 1 plus rho x y is greater than equals to 0 and 1 minus rho x y is greater than equals to 0 so this together will imply minus 1 less than equals to rho x y less than equals to 1 and this implies the correlation coefficient lies between the values in minus 1. <clears throat> right? So do anyone have doubt here now? It's a very simple way. Okay? Right. Yes. Sir, yes. sir uh, we are dividing it by the standard deviation of x, but here x is only a random variable which we are not knowing. Then, like uh, in practically, uh, how are we going to divide it by the standard deviation while we are not knowing the random variables? So, but it doesn't matter here, right? Because, see, it is not required to know x, okay? See, if x is known, then only sigma x is known, right? Yes. Okay. So once I will give you x, you will certainly find out what will it means x, and you you need to have some prior information like its PDF, okay, or or PMF. Then you can certainly find out its standard deviation, or you can say variance. Okay. Similarly for y. Okay, so now what, what does this mean? See, uh, if you uh, uh, go with this further, uh, I'm just going to now, what, what does this mean? X, you know, so what is X, Y, Sigma, X? Is going, yeah? So, uh, means uh, you have, if suppose X is taking any value, so let um, uh, you have C belongs to X of omega. Okay, any value in the range space because I don't know discrete or uh, continuous. Okay, then what are the values this uh, x by sigma x will take? C by sigma x belongs to x of omega. And this is if and only if c by sigma x belongs to x of omega, if and only if c belongs to x of omega. Okay? Okay. It's a 1 1 on 2 correspondence. So, uh, for this, uh, this third theory, I means like to proving this theoretical result, you don't need any information for random variable x. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, uh, we have done last time a very important result, which named as Markov's inequality. We will see some examples how they are going to be used. Okay, so Markov's inequality is tends for a non-negative random variable means it assumes only non-negative values, or you can say the values on the positive x-axis. You can say. Okay, then for any value a, x is for a probability of x greater than or equals to a is going to be bounded by this this quantity. And I hope uh, this uh, uh, this is uh, uh, very much shows so you have mu x, this is mean, and this a is a number, a is strictly greater than 0. Okay. So, this giving you certain estimate. Okay. And which, have, which we have established in the last discussion. Okay. So, I am not going to uh, uh, draw that uh, proof again here. So, okay, so it was very simple. So, I have proved it for continuous case. Okay, you have started with exp finding expectation of x is nothing but the x time fx of x dx. 
okay so then uh, since x is a non negative random variable means fx of x only assumes the values on the positive x axis x cannot assume the negative value so it's is it's this equal this in uh, this integral equals to 0 to infinity that's a sure now that is subdivided from 0 to a and a to infinity because means you want to work with this constant a okay so 0 to a and this is a to infinity so since this is a positive number okay this will this will turn out to be positive number because of the integral property okay fx of x is non negative and x is non negative so product of non and negative number is non negative and if you are integrate over this over the positive side it is again going to be non negative you can use a monotonicity okay of the integral operator so this certainly greater than or equals to this and over this a to infinity interval x is greater than or equals to this. So again monotonicity of integral will lead to this so this is a very simple proof okay now another uh, uh, important result is named as chebyshev's inequality okay which is going to design the weak law of last number okay means in the long run if you perform some sequence of random variable in the long run what will happen okay and i hope you can understand by long run means like if you are increasing the number of experiment thousand ten thousand and so on okay what will happen there okay so then you will get a theoretical result here okay and that will assure that will give you a mathematical base to utilize okay that fact okay so chebyshev's inequality stands for any type of random variable which can assume either negative value or or positive values or mix of them okay so it can be anywhere on the real line so it can be on anywhere on the real line okay now uh, let's say uh, mu x denotes the mean and variance is sigma x square okay then for any positive k greater than zero okay this probability is bounded by variance divided by k square So, can someone try to emphasize uh, that uh, what it signifies, okay, geometrically or physically you can say. Can someone try to interpret this? So, what does this denote mod of x minus mu x? What you have learnt in calculus? What is the Re absolute value? So, it's a distance between the mean point and the point which we are considering. Okay. And, and greater than or equal to, limit, to k. We are trying to limit yeah. it into some range from like mu x minus k to mu x plus k. Are you sure? It's greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to. So this distance is more than k, positive number. Now, this the distance of this is more than this positive number k is going to be this probability is bounded by this number. Can you can you now tell something about it now? Can I read this with probability that x is going apart from me? Okay, means like probability that this is apart x, that the x value is apart from the mean. Means for this, uh, uh, if you go with the distance, this if more than, if you k, what it will tends to, the right hand side, the probability is going to be 0. So that probability. So the values of most of the values of x will lie surrounding the mean. Can I interpret this like this? At certain point of time, 
okay after certain amount of time the probability that it is that the values of x going apart from the mean that probability is almost negligible that can i interpret here okay right i hope you got it now so these two events are equivalent so because as you know it is very difficult with the working with the magnitude so that's why we are working with the here square okay so mod whether you work with this set of events or you work with this set of events okay both will give you the same result okay right so let's let's proceed now okay we are going to work with this so now uh, uh, see we are going to instead of see, we are going to try to evaluate the probability of this set of event so means we can work with the probability of this set of events now note that this x minus mu x whole square will take only possible see if you uh you can say if you difference with a constant value of a random variable it will again give you a random variable okay and if you square it it will give you non negative random variable okay because one of them is random so it will total in totality it will become a random variable only okay so this squared one is going to be a non negative random variable which can assume only non negative values okay so probability of this so you can certainly apply the markov inequality here so k is also a positive number okay so probability that x minus mu x whole square get can equals to k square is less than equals to if you go and check x is a non negative take assume the negative values non negative values and probability that x greater than equals to a is less than equals to mean of this random variable here which is sitting divided by a okay so this is what is going to be applied here so markov inequality is applicable is going to be less than equals to expectation of x minus mu x whole square this random variable divided by k square and now if you look at this closely what is this is nothing but the variance okay so this is sigma x square by k so this is what we wanted to establish so it's a simple application of markov inequality okay right so this is stabilize the chebyshev's inequality okay now now we can state the very important result which is name as the weak law of large number okay so what this is as follows so let you have a sequence of identically distributed independent random variables so let's try to understand this okay identically distributed independent so they are independent random variables is v a sequence of independent random variables and you know what do we mean by sequence okay x1 x2 x3 and so we can which you can enumerate you can say okay and identically distributed means what both all will share the same pdf or pmf either they are discrete or and they will share the same pmf or they are are continuous and they will share the same pdf okay so let x i is be x i be a sequence of identically distributed independent random variables in short you will see its name as i i d okay so each having let's say mean is a uh, mu so if all share the same random all will share the same pda for pma so they will have the same mean okay right then what will happen so for any epsilon bigger than 0 so vivek do you want to say something no sir okay you raised your hand so then for any epsilon bigger than 0 what this will give you is probability that mod of x1 my x this what is this okay if this is a uh, x1 plus x2 this if you take n numbers okay n random variables and divide by n 
some of them, some of these n random variables, and that is divided by n. What is this? If you go and work with this data, so this will denote the sample mean. Okay, and this mu is, is the original mean. Okay, so this is the original mean of each random variable, and this is nothing but the sample mean of the data. Okay, so probability that this mod, the sample mean, is going apart from the mean, which was the mean for x1 or x2 or anyone, is because all are IIDs. That will that probability is more than absolute means that that greater than epsilon. The distance is more than absolute. That probability is tending to zero as n tends to infinity. So if you take, if you fix as large as possible number of samples, it's going to converge to this mean. Right? Greater than absolute. So for any epsilon bigger than zero, so you can take epsilon as small as possible or epsilon as large as possible. So probability that this less than equals to epsilon is means one. Okay, that absin, however, as small as possible. So sample mean will converge to the original mean. Okay, so I hope this interprets the this result. And this is again an application of you can see this mod is there, so it's going to be an application of Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, so we are going to establish the result for whenever the variances are finite. Okay, so see, each x1, x2, and so on, this is a sequence of random variables. So if you take the, any n, so if you denote, I will denote this y equals to x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn by n. Or you can say this is y n. I am going to apply Chebyshev's inequality. So what I need, I need mean, right? I need variance of this, okay? Right? I need these two information, variance as well as mean, okay? So here the mean is what? What is the mean? Expectation of Yn. If you use the linear property, so I hope uh, this both sides are pretty much clear here that one expectation of y n is equals to expectation of x1 plus and so on x n by n since expectation is a linear okay linear operator you can say or it's a it follows the it has the linear properties so 1 by n is out and expectation of x1 plus and so on plus expectation of x n and since all of them are equal to mu, so n time mu, so n time mu by n, and that's going to be mu. Okay. Now you can also find out the variance here. So variance of y n, you can also find out. Okay. So since x1 plus x2 plus x n is again a random variable, so variance of this uh, x1 plus and so on plus x n by n is going to be 1 by n square time variance of x1 plus and so on plus xn. Now, since they are IID independently distributed, so, you know, variance of sum of random variable equals to sum of the individual individual variances as, as whenever these are independent. So, it's going to be 1 by n square summation variance of each xi i is equals to 1 to n but all of them will share the same variance because they have the shares they have the same pdf if you denote that that by sigma sigma so it is n times sigma so sigma square okay and it will be turned out as sigma square by n okay right so now so this is what is here. So sigma x square by, so this is going to be the final one, sigma x square by n. Okay, so variance of yn is this. Okay, now apply the Chebyshev's inequality. So Chebyshev's inequality says that for any k, 
greater than zero, you have the following result. Now take x equals to means in our word it is a y n mu is mu and sigma x square is what sigma x square by n because you have just now find out what is the variance of this okay and that's going to be greater than equals to f and k equals to you can take epsilon okay so once you replace all the things so you have sigma x square by n time epsilon square and sigma x square by epsilon square is a is a fixed quantity when you are increasing n okay so when letting n tends to infinity this tends to zero now see what we have used indirectly here is yes sandwich theorem okay because we know that probability that this is greater than equals to zero okay so left hand side will tends to zero and right hand side will tends to zero so this this will also tends to zero okay so don't forget that in indirectly we are also use this sandwich theorem okay so in the long run the sample mean will converge to the original mean okay right okay so let's uh, we have the one example here suppose that it is known that the number of items Suppose that it is known that the number of items produced in a factory during a week is a random variable with mean 50. So I have the only following information. Okay, during a week is a random variable. So if you denote that X, the number of items produced in a factory during a week, then it is going to be a random variable whose mean is expectation value of X is 50. Now, what can be said about the probability that this week's production will exceed 75? So it's very simple. It's a very straightforward application of you, what you are interested in, that probability that if you denote X as a the number of items produced in a factory during a week and you need it is more than 75. So you, need, you are estimating the probability that X is greater than 75 and you don't have any information. So it will see this, this first, first of all, this random variable is always in non-negative, right? So every week, either there will be a production or there will be no production, zero. It will only always take it greater than or equal to zero, so non-negative random variable. So probability that x greater than 75 is less than equal to expectation of x divided by 75 and which is going to be concluded as 2 by 3. So it's a very straightforward application of Markov's inequality, right? Okay. Now, what is next here is the following. So, if the variance, the variance of a week's production is not to equal twenty-five, so you know sigma x square is twenty-five. Then, what can be said about the probability that this week's production will be between forty and sixty? means you are interested in this okay so when you have x in the range of something you are certainly you can, right you are most of it, 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 uh, mostly you are going to apply chebyshev's inequality that you can just keep in mind okay so you can rewrite this as follows i can rewrite this as follows right x is lies between 40 to 60 so x minus 50 will lies between minus 10 to plus 10. So it's various ways to do it. Okay, write it down. So I have write it down in one of the way. So it's going to be mod of x minus 50 less than 10. Why I have why I have chosen this 50 here? Because 50 is mean. Yes. So because I am interested in applying the Chebyshev's inequality and Chebyshev is using here mod x minus mu x and mu x is a mean. This is why here x minus 50. Okay. So this is important. So mod of x minus 50 is less than 10. 
Now you can use the probability result because you know Chebyshev's inequality stands for mod of x minus mu x greater than or equals to k. So I just write one minus this, right? This is all these things are true. Okay. Now you know the variance is 25, and you know Chebyshev's inequality. Okay. So what it is is this is going to be Chebyshev's inequality says that. This probability is less than or equals to sigma x square divided by this k square. K is 10. So 10 square. So sigma x square is 25 divided by 100. And that's going to be 1 by 2. Now, if you multiply by minus here, so it will be greater than or equals to minus 1 by 4. And this will be the final result. Please do verify whether there is any mistake. So you can see Chebyshev's inequality is looking around the mean, about the mean. Okay. And Marco's inequality look for a random variable which assumes only non-negative values. Okay. Right? It is correct, right? So the production between the number 40 to 60 probability is greater than or equals to 3 by 4, so 0.75%, so 75%, right? Okay. Now, let's uh, work out with this problem. Suppose that a sequence of IID is performed. Okay. For an event, whether E, so E be a fixed event, and let's say probability of A denotes the probability that E occurs on a given trial. Okay, and let's assume that see, we need to okay, we need to specify, then only we can work, right? Because we are now doing example, we are not developing it very research. So we are taking all of them are indicator random variables, and which will notice whether the pro that E occur or does not occur. Okay. So what we say is Xi denotes the indicator random variable and which assumes the value 1 if E occurs on a trial I. So I. So on a trial I if E occurs that event E occurs or 0 if E does not occur on a trial I. So you can look at like uh, you are tossing a coin whether head you got or not you will not know. Okay. Now, what this sum will denote then? X1 plus X2 plus Xn. It will denote the number of times that E event occur in the first n trials. I hope you get it. Okay. So, X1 plus X2 plus Xn. Okay. This will denote what? This will denote the number of times that E event occur in the first n trials. Okay. So, we are interested in looking in the long run what will happen okay so now each you know you have already dealt with a indicator random variable and you are very well known that mean of each random variable is probability of occurrence of e and we have also found the variance okay what was the variance of an indicator random variable when the event A occurs or does not occur is probability of A time 1 minus probability of A, if you if you recall that. Okay. So, this is what here. So, probability of E time 1 minus probability of E will give you the variance. So, for each I. Okay. Now, let us define this X bar as the sum of N random variables X1 to Xn divided by N. Okay, so now you can you can find out what is the mean of this and what is the variance of this. So you are you are you are doing a sampling, okay, sample mean. Okay, 
So x bar will denote a sample mean random variable. Okay. So, so it's it's very general. Okay, you know very well. So x bar when you work out the problems in a plus two class also, you have denoted something x bar as a summation of x i s divided by n, right? So expectation of x bar also easy to compute. And variance of x bar is also easy to compute in the similar fashion just now we have done, because these x y s are independent random variables. Okay, now what the what the what the uh, this uh, uh, weak law of large number says probability that x bar minus mu x bar is going apart from the mean for any epsilon bigger than zero. Okay, if your distance is more than epsilon, is going to tending to zero as n tends to infinity. Right? Yes. So, what it signifies now? Yes. Can anyone in interpret here? Now you have everything information. What the variance is showing in the log run? Variance is in the log run is tending to zero. zero. Yeah. So in the log run, variance will be almost negligible. Spreading among the values, you can see of x. So, sir, we can expect the mean of the uh, mean of the random variables uh, to assume just the value of the original mean. Yeah, original mean only, right? It's going to be that that probability is one. Okay, in the long run, the, the occurrence of the event E probability is one. This is what it is showing. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, what the uh, Markov inequality is? Because see, x bar, each x i will take a non-negative value, right? One zero, one or zero. So x bar will also take a non-negative value. So probability that x bar greater than a is less than equals to mu by a. Okay. So we are trying to uh, fit all the inequalities here. So let, let's try to interpret this now. So if you take a is equals to mu, now what will happen? So probability that x bar is greater than mu is less than equals to one, and that is. Uh, that's okay, right? This is a probability property. It is obviously true. And when you take a equals to root mu, the probability of x bar is greater than root mu is less than equals to root mu, right? Whether does this signify this anything? Yeah, what I am trying to say is, ask you is, so for the case a equals to root mu, probability of x bar greater than square root of mu. Mu cannot be greater than, than one. To, uh, less than equals to uh, uh, what is there is this is going to be square root of mu. Huh? Why? Why it is saying that this is mu cannot be greater than one? Mu can be greater than one because probability cannot be greater than one. So. No, but here is less than equals to. Should keep an eye here. It's a less than equals to. So if it is more than one, even it's still true. Suppose mu is two. What is square root of two? One point four one four. So probability that x will get the square root of that two point four one four. Oh, sorry, one point four one four is less than equals to one point four one four. It is true because probability is always less than one, so it is 
it's strictly less than even. It's not a problem. Okay, I think uh, this is not giving much information. So let's uh, let's have the Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, I think Chebyshev's inequality is uh, uh, also giving you the same feeling as we plot last year. Okay, because in the long run, again this k. Okay, this is k is there. So in the long run, that going uh, sample mean will going to close to mean the original mean. Okay, so this is what it is again interpret the similar thing. Okay, so it will not give you more other, other information. Okay, right. Okay, now uh, let's uh, uh, now let's move forward to identify now special type of random variables. Okay, so the first uh, uh, random variable which we are going to define as a Bernoulli random variable. Okay, so you can understand Bernoulli random variable that you perform an experiment or a trial, okay, whose outcome you can, I mean, whose outcome you can look at like either a success or a failure, okay, based like you are tossing a coin. If you get a hat, you will success. If you get a tail, you will be, you will be failure. Okay, or you are rolling a dice and you say, if I got an even number, I will win, and if you get an odd number, you will you, I will fail. Okay, so you have to divide the possible outcome. You can only classify it as either a success or as a failure. That random variable is known as a Bernoulli random variable. Okay, and its PMF is also straightforward. That probability of success, which we uh, which we generally denote by that probability of success by p, okay, and probability of failure is one minus, okay. So if I read this from the first line, I think you have already have read that. Suppose that a trial is it's only uh, uh, what I have said just is in word. That suppose that a trial or an experiment whose outcome can be classified as either a success or as a failure is performed. And let X will take the value 1. So it is it's also important when the outcome is a success. So when the outcome is a success, you will X will take the value 1. And 0 when the outcome is a failure. It's a kind of indicator random variable. It's a specialized indicator random variable. Because it's a specialized, why? Because it can only take value 1 or 0. Okay. But indicator random variables put to it negative values, positive, positive values, all type of values. Okay. So here in this case, when the outcome is a success, x will take the value 1 with probability p. And it will, when the outcome is a failure, it will take the value 0 with probability 1 minus Okay, right. So it's denote the PMF of Bernoulli random variable. Okay, because x assumes either of the value one or zero with probability p and one minus p respectively. Okay, so this is the definition here, very clear cut definition. Okay, that a random variable x is said to be a Bernoulli random variable if it assumes the value zero or one. And its PMF is given by the following. Okay, so probability of x equals to 0 is 1 minus p and x equals to 1 is p. So p denotes the probability of success. Okay, right. Now, if you repeat this Bernoulli trials n time, okay, if you repeat this Bernoulli trial, so, when you run a trial, okay, when you perform a trial, if you only notice either a success or a failure for, for, the, for the particular case, means success or fail, 
and if you repeat this n time then what you will see how many time you will get a success okay right so or in other words sum of n bernoulli random variables okay which will take the values from 0 to n right so that will so we are so bernoulli trial will leads towards the binomial random variable okay so it here it is i am just now what i have said just now okay let me conclude here suppose that n independent bernoulli trials are to be formed say let's say xi i equals to 1 to n okay and so bernoulli trial means each trial results in a success or a failure so let's say assume that each trial results in a success with probability p and in a failure with probability 1 minus okay so let x will denote the sum of these n bernoulli trials so what it will be equals to if you if you if you read it this what is this physically is number of successes that occurs in the n trials so it may be one success two success or no success okay in n number of trials so if you toss n point n times it may possible that all the n time you will not get had it is possible okay or all of them may be had right or number of i number of time is had and n minus i number of time is still so this x will take the values from 0 to n okay now it is important now so this is going to now it is important to identify the pmf okay so this again this will assume the discrete value so it's going to be a discrete random variable so bernoulli is also a discrete random variable and this is this will x will also identifies the discrete random variable and which will be named as binomial why binomial you will know okay or you may already know okay why you why it is named as binomial okay so so pmf i have so you have this is x belongs to 0 to n and we will so i here is the notation okay that it will follow the binomial, uh, binomial distribution okay so with two parameters okay either we will say binomial distribution or random variable both are the same thing okay so binomial with parameter n and p so what this n will signify is n will signify is number of times independent trials performed and p will denote the probability of success in each trial okay now it is important to identify its pmf okay so if you uh, uh, let, uh let me now you are interested in finding the so x can take any values from 0 to n 0 1 to n and we are interested to identify what is the probability of x equals to i means what what is the x equals to i means probability of number of success is i and number of failures is what is this is the meaning right failure is n minus i right now see you are repeatedly you are doing n number of trials means they are independent okay so so number of success is i out of n and number of failure is n minus i so p into p into n so on i times and 1 minus p is the prob probability of failure right and so on 1 minus p 
that will be n minus i times. Now, these things can be, okay, can have any order, okay, means first is failure, second is success, third is success, fourth is failure, and so on. So, how many such possible cases will be n c i? So, out of n, i is success, okay. So, that will give you the n c i. So, n choose i. So, now, this is equals to n c i times p to the power i times 1 minus p times 1 minus p to the power n minus i with i equals to 0, 1, 2 and so on. So, this will give you the PM. Now, this you saw, if, if you recall, this is nothing but the binomial coefficient. Okay. Now, if you look at the following, 1 plus, uh, sorry, uh, P plus 1 minus P to the power N. You know, A plus B to the power N. Okay. You know how it is. Okay, this is going to be summation, right? N C I P to the power I 1 minus P to the power N minus I I equals to 0 to N. And left hand side is nothing but 1. So the total probability, so probability of X equals to 0 plus X equals to 1 plus and so on probability of X equals to N is equals to 1. It will give you that also. Okay, and this NCI is nothing but the binomial coefficient of this expansion. This is why it is known as binomial random variable. Okay, right. So this is just now explained. Okay, okay. So now about the binomial random variable, you need to identify the number of independent trials and probability of success in each trial okay if you know you can get this in two information okay and expectation of x is n time p and variance of x is this we are going to uh, work out with this okay so but if this is true what it tells you is variance is going to be smaller than b in the case of binomial random variance it's very straightforward, right? N time P time 1 minus P is less than N time P because 1 minus P is less than P. So it's very straightforward. So variance X, so see the variance is going to be smaller than B. Okay? Now, if you now look at this, so now let's try to prove this expectation of X is N time P. Okay, so we want to establish this result. So there are there are two ways. Okay, I will I will try to explain the both ways. Okay, means very simple way is also there, so that we also try to see. But if you try to go with the direct definition, expectation of x is equals to what is that? Is a discrete random variable. So summation x time px of x and x will range over the all values of x right so if you go with that so expectation of x is equals to the following right okay so expectation of x is equals to this right now you uh, uh, you substitute the value of that uh, that the probability that x equals to i is equals to this. Now expand this nci. You know what is the nci? Is n factorial divided by n minus i factorial times i factorial, and if you cancel with this i, you have i minus one factorial here. And now you are arranging. Okay. Now you are rearranging the, the terms here. Something you need to uh, take out what is that is n time p what why it is so so that this is going to be an expansion of some a plus b to the power n minus 1 or n minus i whatever okay so 
n factorial can be written as n time n minus 1 factorial okay so n will come out from here now p to the power i p will also will come out that is p and it here uh, what it will remain is p time i uh, p to the power i minus 1 Now, see, the first sum here, i equals to 0 to n. The second sum is i equals to 1 to n. Why? Can anyone tell? If you noticed, i I have i equals to 0 to n and second sum I have i equals to 1. Why? Yes? I equal to 0 will be because 0. Yes, yeah, sir. i equals to 0 will not contribute anything because i is sitting in the product here. So i equals to 0 will not leave anything. So this is why our life is simple here because if i equals to 0, p to the power minus 1 may create some difference or uh, may, may create some problem later on. Okay, so this is why I just want to verify it again back. Okay, and n time p is out. And now if you look at this coefficient, this coefficient carefully is nothing but, it's nothing but, it's nothing but you have, if you look at this, it's nothing but n minus 1 c i minus 1. Right? So, this is nothing but n minus 1 c i minus 1. And now, this together, because i is here one from, from 1 to n. Okay? So, n minus 1 c is 0, the first entry. And last entry is when you have i equals to n is n minus 1 c n minus 1. So, I can write this as this total block, this one, as p plus 1 minus p to the power n minus 1. And since this is p plus 1 minus p is again, p will get cancelled and 1 to the power n minus 1 is 1 and you will remain with n times p. Right? So, it will be, so this is, this is what we have faced the problem with respect to expectation of x. When you go with the variance of x, you will again, you have to deal with such type of problem. Okay, again you have to arrange the coefficients and so on. So, what is the alternate here? Is to look at the basic of binomial random variable. So, binomial random variable with the n number of independent trial is nothing but you can treat them as a sum of n Bernoulli random variables. And you know what are the variables and what is the mean of each Bernoulli random variable that was simple, right? So, I am going to use that, okay? Right? So, uh, this is okay, fine. Now, if you see, so this is what it is I am stating here. So, x follows binomial means x equals to x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn, sum of n independent Bernoulli trials with probability of success p in each trial. Now see, it is how it is simple now. Expectation of x is nothing but summation of i equals to 1 to n, expectation of xi. Now each expectation of xi is nothing but t. How many times is n time? Very straightforward. Similarly, variance of x, since they are independent random variables, so variance of summation of xi is nothing but summation of individual variances. And variance of Bernoulli random variable is p time 1 minus p for each i n time this and it's simple. So basic sum time helps you a lot in this case. Right? So uh, x has the, I mean if x follows the binomial random variable with n number of independent trial and p as a probability of success then its mean is going to be n time p and variance of x is n time p time 1 minus okay right so the thing is clear okay now 
let's uh, do this problem okay read it okay so it is known that this produced by a certain company will be defective with probability 0 0.01 independently of each other okay so disks produced by a certain company will be defective so will be defective with probability 0 0.0 either see either the disk will be defective or it will work okay so defective probability you can treat as like a either a failure or success with probability 0 0.01 and failure with probability 0.99 or either otherwise okay other way around okay and each disk you should treat them as independently so if you name them x1 x2 and so on so all will denote the bernoulli trials okay right now the company sells the disk in the packages of 10 so if you go and buy okay then you will you have to buy a package of 10 okay means x if x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus x10 and you know some of these 10 bernoulli trials will converge to the binomial okay with 10 as the n value and p is the probability of success if you denote 0.01 it will be defective okay and 0.99 is 1 minus p okay so you have all that information okay and what the company is doing is the company offers a money back guarantee that at most one of the 10 disk is defective okay so, so it is giving one way guarantee that at most one of the 10 this means it says that if more than one disk is defective, means x greater than equals to 2, okay, then it will give you the money bank guarantee, okay. What proportion of package is returned, okay, right. So, you have all the information, I have tried to model it in a certain scenario and I hope you get it okay so what I just now said is here it is so let x denotes the number of defective disks in a package okay so x will take any values number of defective disks could be 0 or all of them are could be defective so 0 1 2 and so on 10 all value it will take okay okay so since each disk will be defective with probability 0 0.01 and non defective with probability 0 0.99, therefore it is a Bernoulli trial. So you can denote them as that. Okay. Now, also these Bernoulli trials are independent of each other because we are disks are defective or not defective independently. Okay. So therefore, X will follow the binomial distribution with this. And it offers a money back guarantee that at most one disk of 10 is defective. So you need probability of x greater than 1. Means the package return. Okay. The package returning probability you need to find out. So it will return only when you have more than one disk in the package is defective. So probability of x greater than 1 is going to be is equals to 1 minus probability of x less than equals to 1 and it's going to be 1 minus probability of x equals to 0 minus probability of x equals to 1 and if you fix all the values you know x follows the binomial distribution and you know the pmf if you fix them it's going to be 0 0.00. So, the package will return with the probability 0 0.005. Okay. Right. <coughs> Do anyone have doubt? Okay. So, so this is uh, uh, what it is written is the law of null number it follows that in the long run 0.5% of the packages will have to be replaced 
okay so this is very easy to follow so each package see each package you can look at like a again uh, if you uh, so each package either it will be returning or it will not be returning you can treat that so it will be returning with probability 0 0.005 and it will not be returning with the probability point you have uh, 995 okay so either probability of success and probability of failures you can again treat them as a Bernoulli trials okay and this will take value one uh, how many packages will return or how many packages will not return and you know the law of large number says that in the long run right so what is the, what is the um, what is the mean is 0 0.005 right mean of that Bernoulli trial is 0 0.005 right so in the long run so 0 0.005 if you make it as a percentage it's going to be 0.5 percent of the packages will have to be replaced so it's going to be, right that's the law of large number c okay now i left this question to you that if someone buys three packages what is the probability that exactly one of them is returned okay I have given you every clue here. Okay, package will return with probability 0 0.005, will not be returning with probability 0.995. So, returning is a probability of success, you can say, and not returning can be treated as a, point, a probability of failure. Okay, what is the probability that exactly one of the packages will be returned or really replaced, whatever you see? Okay. Hint is this will again will follow a binomial random variable with pro, with n equals to three and p equals to 0 0.005, and you need probability of x equals to one. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, and I think his answer is here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fine. I think uh, we can uh, 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 we can close here. Okay. Yeah. So we can close here. Thank you. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay, sir, I mean, thank you. No, sir, I am in the doubt. Yeah, sir, yeah, can, yeah. Sir, sir, can we see that in the indicative random variable is also a Bernoulli random variable because there the indicative yeah. random variable took the value 0 or 1 depending on whether the event not occurred or occurred. Pardon? I, I, I have lost some variable. Again, say it. Yeah. Sir, can you please, sir, uh, can we say that an indicative random variable? Is a binary random variable because no, sir, no, no, no. An I said no, no, no. I I said Bernoulli random variable is a specialized indicator random variable. Okay, so it is a fixed. So is a fixed uh, type of means which take value one if probability success. I mean if uh, event occurred and it will take value zero if event does not occur but on the other hand event that indicator random variable can take negative value as well and positive values as well anyone anyone okay it may take minus two when probability of uh, that uh, that event uh, uh, b occurs and, uh, uh, and zero if uh, event uh, does not occur so indicator random variable can take any value positive value or negative values so but only trial is a specialized indicator Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.